All right, Hades Omega here. I'm uh, doing some work on my Prius here. As you can see, uh, it's got no battery in there anymore. And here is the battery. I know, like, right when I pulled it out, it started raining the night <laughs> after I started working on it. But anyway, here it is. Take this cover off here. So this is the battery for my uh, 2005 Toyota Prius. It's given me the triangle of death uh, symbol, and uh, I just pulled it out last night and uh, and I checked it out. So um, so what I did was uh, I started checking the voltages with this guy here and uh, the way I'm the way I'm doing it is I have this voltmeter or multimeter and I just clamp a one here and the other side and I've taken all, all the bus bars off and then right there that way I don't have to I'll just turn this bad boy on So there you go. That's how I check the voltages. So I do that for each one. There's 28 of them, and um, and I found one that was lower than most of them. It was this one. This one was like a, most of them were about 8.2 volts. Uh, this one's like 8.17. I know they they kind of self discharge after a while, but uh, I'm trying to get them to be like 8.2 volts. But this one is 6.9. So this is the bad one right here but um, I'd already gone and replaced it so um, so yeah I ordered uh, one off of eBay this they said it was good and um, I knew there would be at least one bad cell so I went and ordered one beforehand and uh, I was surprised to see when I pulled the battery out um, all these uh, the battery bars here are all uh, corroded a lot of copper is all corroded and stuff. Ooh, I noticed some of them are different, uh, different shapes too. Hope I didn't, uh, we'll figure it out when <laughs> I put it back. Anyway, there's the rest of them. These are the little plastic protectors for them. So what I think I might wind up doing is I'm gonna, like, coat them, do a light, really light coat of dielectric ge grease or silicone grease to, to keep it from corroding again. Uh, I know I don't want to put too much because if I do have to take the battery out again and fiddle around with it, um, it it'll be kind of messy. So <laughs> try not to uh, do that. But so um, this is how I uh, how I check the voltages. I use my phone. I got Evernote here, and I just list all the for however many twenty eight or something. I guess it would be better to make a table, but. So here on the left I put BCU, so like battery control unit, this one right here. So I'm, and I'm so that means I'm I'm measuring it with this side on the left, and then all the battery modules on the right. And yeah, so like I said, these are what the results I got. 8.2, 8.17, and then there we go. Module 24 has a 6.95 volts, and uh, you could tell it was bad. Because when I pulled it out, oh, I didn't, I didn't bring it with me. I'll show you it later. But uh, when I pulled it out, it wasn't flat. It was like kind of like puffed up. So what had ha been happening is, uh, the since the since the um, capacity went down, it was overcharging the battery and causing it to heat up, and and then it puffed out. I mean, it was really hard to get these uh, bars off to get this off. Um, yeah, this is kind of a pain in the ass to put back into it. I, I wound up bending this and uh, you know, all that good stuff. But uh, what I found is uh, so so the way I want I replaced it that um, was uh, if you look under here, yeah, it's a good idea to work on a table, a clean table. If you look under here, there's these like a it's kind of like a it, what it really reminds me of is a computer case, like a 
like a tower or something because uh this metal is really flimsy like a like a computer some computer older computer towers not like the fancy gaming ones but anyway it's got like the same type of screws and everything and 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 like they alternate and they hold the um the batteries down and it's the same on the other side but it's like opposite so the, the screw will be like here so that's what holds the batteries down I'd wish Toyota would make a better like case for this so you can just like swap cells in you know kind of like a laptop battery or something but uh, anyway um, I'm pretty sure they didn't want you to be doing this kind of stuff but uh <laughs> so I unbolted all of those and I unbolted the sides the this is really this these bars here are really what make this um this whole thing like sandwiched together that's really what provides all the rigidity and it was they were pretty the bolts were pretty tight because uh because this one had expanded but uh basically i unbolted these and some people are saying to take the cell out and then shift them to the side i'm like i don't know why you would do that because then the polarities would be different because you see here you got a positive negative positive negative so you got to alternate them every other one so you can keep them in series so what i wound up doing is i just uh i loosened them all i kind of like moved them a little bit I took this out the little vent tube and then uh, I pulled the pulled the cell out or the module out and I just put the good one in and then you can kind of have to there the, the sides of them are kind of like they're keyed so um, so like they they grab onto each other so you got to get it in the right place and then getting this end plate on was kind of challenging but my suggestion is um, is to kind of lift the, all this all the modules together put it on the side and then just kind of like try to push it together and then and then push it downward and then lock it in place with this so it wasn't too tough uh, I don't know why this one is missing a bolt it seems like there used to be a bolt here but I don't really see a lot of space to put a bolt in there because uh, this is a previously been worked on I hope since it's so damp outside it's not gonna start rusting but uh, but yeah Speaking of, uh, so the battery bars, I'm going to go clean all these with a wire brush and then put silicone on them. Um, also, the one cell that I got on eBay was like 7.5 volts, a lot lower than all the other ones. So I, I think it was discharged or something. So I charged it. I charged it. I charged it with my IMAX V6 AC... Uh, lipo charger sky rc lipo charger and uh yeah i was trying to get my brain out the i have a mrc 989 brain but super brain but um it uh i couldn't find the power supply for it this one has a built-in power supply so <laughs> so all i did was like i uh, actually these uh, alligator clips weren't long enough to uh actually accommodate <laughs> how long the pack is because see this is all, as much as i got you know so i wound up connecting it to another pair those other pair of uh, uh test leads um but it's fine it didn't overheat or anything uh so basically i hooked it up i turned the charger on and i was just like oh, okay i'm just gonna monitor the voltages so here it tells you like what the voltage is so so i was shooting for like 8.2 and i saw like some of them were 8.3 so I was shooting for around 8.3 because when the voltage settles off, because of the because the heat dissipates, it um it gets lower. So actually, let's go see what that cell is at right now. So I had I had it around 8.2 yesterday. Let's see what it is now. Uh, 8.02, huh? It's not a not super high. It was 8.2 last time, but yeah, like I said, when when the batteries get cold, the the voltage goes down. But but the what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to balance these. I'm trying to get them as close in voltage as possible. Um, I may wind up uh, charging some of the other ones to get the voltage up a little bit. But I'm shooting, like I said, I'm shooting for around 8.2 or whatever um, whatever the average is. So I'm gonna have to do it again because. Uh, also, I want to note that um, that I turned the car on before I pulled the battery out, and it uh, 
so yeah, so the I'm just trying to get the voltages similar to each other. Um, but uh, but yeah, before I pulled the battery pack out, I uh, I had charged the um, I charged a pack with the car. I, t I just turned the car on and I let it run for a while. So yeah. But uh, I'm just gonna go and uh, check the voltages again, see which ones I need to charge, and then uh, all I have to do, all that's left to do, is clean these up. And then I gotta go to the auto store and get some dielectric grease because I don't think I have enough. I, I have a small tube, but uh, and uh, yeah, so uh, and then I'll put put the battery back together and uh, put it back in the car and see if it works. <laughs> It's honestly, it wasn't really that heavy. It's not as heavy as I thought it would be. Um, it's just awkward to carry out of the car. Uh, but anyway, I just used the cart to put it on. So I just used a cart to uh, to move the battery here for my car, which is like down that down over there. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so that's all that's left to do is just clean these up, put the put the bars back on, and then maybe try to balance the cells a little bit with the charger. Um, and check the voltages again. Okay, so I just went and checked them all again. For some reason, these last couple modules are higher than the rest of them. That's like a, I got an 8.17, where most of them are like 8. And most of them are just 8. Uh, I found one that's kind of lower than the rest of them, 7.94, a little bit lower. I might charge it out a little bit. Um, yeah, 7.93. Probably charge those ones. Anything under 8, I will charge a little bit to get the voltage a little bit up so I can balance it. But for the most part, all of them look, look good. Even the one that I charged last night. So I may I may even try to discharge these to get them even more balanced because uh, my charger has a discharger function but um, everything looks good they're pretty close to 8 uh, I'm just going to go I'm just going to go balance these lower ones it's probably 2 or 3 of them and it probably won't take very long I'll probably charge it to like 8.2 volts and then, um, and then just let it settle for a little while and check it again later but uh, yep that's it for now